Turn me up. Turn me up. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Merit Bunch. My name is Nico. Brianna. William. Kianda. Chris. Crystal. And we are the Bunch. Join us as we jump into conversation with Kelly and Pastor Wayne as they discuss their 31 year marriage of love, ministry, and activism in the community. The Bunch and the Wilhelms journey through topics like interracial love, being grandparents, and the importance of voting in this upcoming election. Listen and learn about the beauty of true love. All right, so everybody, let's welcome the Wilhelms. <laughs> y'all want to introduce y'all a little bit um so i'm wayne wilhelm um and i guess y'all get to know us through this uh through this podcast i mean i, I don't know that you want in the beginning um, <laughs> all right and i am kelly wilhelm um wife of wayne wilhelm for 31 years yes um also a mother grandmother oh. full-time <laughs> Um, employee, um, <laughs> just a lot going on. Yes. yes, and I've been knowing them for basically all my life through family and stuff like that, so it's great to have y'all. Yes. It's yeah. good to be here. Yeah, good to be here. For coming. Okay, so we're going to start off with the first topic. Um, so we know you've been together um, 31 years and stuff like that, so how did y'all meet? Can we hear that story? Um, you, you want my version or her version? <laughs> we're going to start, start with her version. Yeah. Let's see so if they match. How, we, how we met, the version is the same. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. um, so we, we met in school. Like, um, mm-hmm. you know, uh, before um, all of these schools propped up everywhere, we had one school in um, Apex for middle school. Mm-hmm. We had one school in Apex for high school, and we attended those schools. Right. Yeah. So we met there. So when y'all were in school, were you like friends? Were y'all. Mm. So we had one class. I guess we met in one class in our senior year. The answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We I guess that would, yeah. I guess that would be. We were not friends. Yeah. Um, in in the class that we had, he was he was trying to make friends. He was always the one trying to make friends. I yeah. wasn't really interested in you know no new friends. Okay. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Okay. So what would you say attracted you to each other? Um, um, I was just a, definitely there was a physical attraction. Okay. Um, so, and I probably I don't. We hung out with a lot of the same people, mm-hmm. so we probably knew of each other, but just didn't know each other. Mm-hmm. So I saw each other around school, mm-hmm. of course, the courtyard at lunchtime. You know, at that time I think there was two hundred people in our graduating class. Yeah. So, yeah. So I mean, now you have thousands. So I mean, there was probably you know there probably won't five hundred people at the whole school while we were there. So you knew a whole lot more. You 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 got to know a whole lot of people and see a whole lot of people. Mm -hmm. So we hung around a lot of the same people. So we, um, and then in that class, just just yeah, started talking to her in that class. Okay. So the attraction for me definitely came later. Like we were out of school, we Mm -hmm. were. I mean, I would see him. We had, like you said, a lot of the same friends. Um, we had a lot of the same interests. We both played softball, so mm-hmm. we were kind of in those circles, so we would just kind of see um, mm-hmm. each other um, all the time. And so the attraction came organically. Like, it, yeah. wasn't, mm-hmm. something I, yeah. it wasn't something that I was definitely looking for. Mm-hmm. But just being with him, like, um, even before you know what the spirit is, right. the spirit is there. Right. Um, and he was funny, so he would make me laugh. He was one of the people who could match my wit. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I just kind of liked having conversations with them, and then that just kind of grew into other things. Yeah, nice. reluctantly. And, yeah, and her, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, in school it was more. It was just a friendship thing. Mm-hmm. And then, like I said, afterwards, her one of her good friends and one of my good friends they were brothers and sisters. Okay. So we were always, and they lived in New Hill. So she would be down there seeing her friends. I would be down there seeing her brother. So we we were we were there, and of mm-hmm. course we knew each other then. So we would just always. You know, communicate and talk. Mm-hmm. We friendship knew here. We was always kind of hanging out in a lot of the same places. So right. the friendship first just kind of began to grow, just knowing each other. Okay, that way. Got you. So, um, had you guys been in an interracial relationship before dating one another? No, I had, and I was <laughs> not. I was. I was not interested. Like that was. That was not even something that was on my radar. Mm-hmm. Really? So yeah. yeah. 
But yeah, I had so it was on my radar. <laughs> <laughs> can't see that right <laughs> so were there any conversations you guys had to have before getting serious along those lines no um and again i'm gonna say that the again the relationship the friendship everything just kind of happened organically like there wasn't yeah. um and I guess it would have had to been more conversation with him because I just wasn't that was, wasn't something I was interested in. Mm-hmm. Um, and and you know we have our types, right? right. We all have our types. Mm-hmm. Um, and white wasn't my type, so mm-hmm. um, so there was not any um, formal conversation that we would have about. We just kind of started hanging out and yeah. kicking it, and we were friends. Mm-hmm. And yeah, pretty much we were more than so. There was not. I don't think we never. There was never really any formal conversation about you white i'm black how's this gonna work yeah like yeah Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah we yeah that conversation didn't happen until yeah i don't it didn't ever happen and we were young like you we've been married for 31 years and Mm -hmm. i hope we don't look at that old like we (laughs) were (laughs) we we were in our that's a misprint (laughs) we were in our early 20s Mm-hmm. Like and and our youngest son right now is twenty six and I cannot imagine him being married to anybody. Right. <laughs> like so, we were just kind of like winging this, not even knowing mm-hmm. like what we didn't know. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we we were not like it. It would be nice to say we you know we sat down, we had all these conversations, mm-hmm. but we were twenty two, twenty three. Like yeah. we yeah. weren't having these conversations. Yeah. Just yeah. just living. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know. And and again, organically is probably the best word because we again we both played softball, so there was a there was we would go we would, on the weekends we would have tournaments sometimes. So there was a girls team and a guys team. Mm-hmm. So of course we would all go, and then sometimes we would, there would be a co-ed team. Right. So we were all we softball field is kind of where we were always at, and then um, other places, a um, couple of the clubs, we would always find ourselves at and and be in the same spaces a lot of times. Okay. Got you. And it just kept growing and growing. I wore it down, really. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was. That's what it was. I mean, eventually, yeah. And that's the story. That's, that's, that's the story. That's the story. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, I mean, sooner or later, yeah, she can't say no for help. <laughs> okay, so what y'all saying it was organic and everything like that, as far as family and friends, how did they react to it? Or was there any reaction? Um. So that was not a... I thought that there would be a big reaction, like because I thought there was a reason why I was I wasn't interested in dating, like mm-hmm. like like it had to come from somewhere, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so it was um, not anything that I was looking forward to taking him home to meet my grandparents. These right. are my grandparents, right. <laughs> <laughs> like these are my grandparents on both sides, right. um, and knowing just like from you know just the generation that they were from. But it was it was it was easy, like mm-hmm. it was it was easy. There was no conflict yeah. um and so that was it was a shocker to me because mm-hmm. like you know i'm bringing this dude <laughs> <laughs> and i don't know like you know what happens in white households but in black households like this white boy is coming over here <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, what? we trying to like each other so what is it like what is it gonna be <laughs> not here <laughs> <laughs> and would you say the same wayne as far as um, your family friends so i so our friends Again, kind of all knew each other. Yeah, so the right. friends was not a good. That was, yeah, it was kind of not a big thing. Um, so my family knew that you know, I had been in an interracial relationship before. So it, you know, that it wasn't. Now, whether they approved, nobody ever told me to my face anyway. Mm-hmm. You know, sure. you know, and people were respectful. So, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. you know, you know, whether they was like, oh, yay, but I doubt that. But right. you know, but <laughs> they probably just were like, he gonna do what he gonna do. Right. <laughs> right. So, did both of you guys desire to get married? I was ready. Um, I I started out early on in the streets. <laughs> so yeah, I was. 14, 15, 16 years old. I was at the clubs. I was at the liquor houses. I was hanging out. Right. So I grew up out in the country. Um, and, you know, you the people that I hung out with were older than I was. So we had places that we hung out. And it's just so from 15 to 21, mm-hmm. I was running, 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 running. So I kind of got all of that out of my system. 
<laughs> and I just remember, you know, I would go to school and they would be talking about the parties they had at the house and they had a keg there. And, and you know, they, somebody brought some beer to their house at their little house parties. <laughs> and I'm like, OK, I'm I'm at the bar ordering <laughs> the places I'm in. I'm at the club. So it was just a, it just a different. Uh, so for me, yeah, I was just kind of ready to settle down and right. i had you know made a few mistakes lost my license a couple of times so it was i was starting to learn the hard way you can either in you can keep this life mm-hmm. <laughs> and keep getting what you're getting mm-hmm. or you can tone it down a little bit and you know make some better decisions right. mm-hmm. so yeah mm-hmm. money not having no license and it's very expensive <laughs> getting them back and going through all of that stuff yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah and then sitting at home you can't get around can't write you so yeah learn lessons quick that's right how about you and um, I mean at 22 again I, who's thinking about marriage at 22 right. <laughs> um, but and I we only dated like a year or two it was like it was a really quick Okay. Like we didn't there wasn't a long process of dating mm-hmm. and i just i don't even we've talked about this and i don't remember the proposal um <laughs> and i remember that he one day said he was talking to his daddy and his dad was like do you like her do you love her are you gonna marry her so I was like okay <laughs> maybe that was the proposal because i don't i don't remember <laughs> yeah. i don't remember any other conversation about you know uh, about being married so right. yeah so it i was, guess yeah. we we decided Together that we were ready. Yeah. It was yeah, it was definitely no fancy proposal. It's, it's so crazy for me to keep yeah. saying that at twenty two. Yeah. <laughs> that was young. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Um, so what are some quality qualities you admire about your spouse? In the in the interim or now? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, <laughs> it's a long uh, debate. Uh, the debate was too long. Um, uh, am, 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 can you ask? No. Um, so definitely, there's so. I don't want to say there's so many more now, but, you, you know, as, as we grow in this relationship, you just begin to appreciate the little things, too. You know, you appreciate so much of, you know, just the other day, yesterday, as a matter of fact. So I had to go to Durham yesterday evening um, to an event yesterday afternoon, and she brought, my, she brought me some clothes so I didn't have to go back home, mm-hmm. change clothes, and go back. And I was just like, that just made me real smile, you know, because <laughs> she didn't have to do that. Yeah. And she had the grandkids with her. So things like that just are over the top, right. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but she's always been very caring, been, you know, great sense of humor, just just fun to be around. And we spend, a lot of people say, too much time together. <laughs> I mean, we do everything yeah. together. Mm-hmm. I mean, we are always, so we enjoy, comp- we enjoy our company. Mm-hmm. So, um but just just the personality. Mm-hmm. Um, Wayne is genuinely a good person. Um, and it's just like it's hard being people who are genuinely good people. Mm-hmm. Um, so he um, he cares about people. Um, I like that. He is attentive. Um, he is <clears throat> a, really a love bomber, which is kind of awkward for me because I'm not like I'm not like touchy feely <laughs> but it's like I mean even like first thing in the morning he's like oh, waking yeah. me up he's say, I'm like bro just <laughs> I love you I, mean, told, I told you that last night like we don't have to talk about it every morning <laughs> but he just always makes sure that um I know that he values me mm-hmm. um and there's never any question about about that so oh yes that's great that's good that was really good yeah so going back to the beginning, we know it was kind of quick, like you said in the beginning. But do you remember who said "I love you" first? Probably Mister. <laughs> if I had to guess, it was me. It's probably like way too early <laughs> to the point where she was like, you "Get scared to say it too quick." <laughs> I don't remember, but I, I would go with that. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. A couple one. years later, she might say. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Right. All right. So, what role did Faith play in your dating and your marriage? None. Yeah, none. We weren't. We weren't in the church. We didn't go. To, so, I, both of us grew up in the church. Mm-hmm. Um, I I probably probably didn't stay in as long as she did. Maybe, but when I was young course went to church but we didn't even get married in church we got married outside behind channel five in the channel five gardens okay. Okay. so um but yeah so it wasn't even we didn't even have a church wedding so it, it really was we didn't go to church 
So yeah, and um, again, I I was raised by my grandparents who were super religious, so I was always always in the church. Mm-hmm. Um, so the first chance I got to run away from the church, that's what I did. Um, and so, and this is kind of like you know meeting this dude who had a curly kid and a rat tail like hanging out at the club like that was kind of my vibe then. um and so it took a while we were probably married maybe five years before we even started looking for a church mm-hmm. um again never you know the bible says train up a child in the way they should go and when they're old they won't depart from they they might for a little bit mm-hmm. but eventually it comes back so yeah. <clears throat> there were some things that happened um you know, in our life and to some friends that Wayne got the, the itching to go back <laughs> before I did. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you talk about, you know, what do you admire about your spouse? He, he is a leader. Like he he leads the house. Lord. And so when he said he was ready to go back, I was like, eh. Mm. That's what we're gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, you go, you go. <laughs> let me know. Let me know. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, we were probably married for five years before we. Even started looking for a church, mm-hmm. and then it took us a long time to agree on church. Yeah. Gotcha. As but, you can imagine, how that might go. Yeah, and I would say probably even though you don't realize it sometimes, I think our faith and our belief shapes us when we don't even realize it. I mean, it it, it does build a foundation. It builds values. It builds things that you don't even realize you put those things to use. Mm-hmm. So it's not like you consciously, you know, saying, "Oh, I'm gonna make sure that I find someone saved," or "I'm gonna make sure I." do this biblically when I you don't think about those things but Mm -hmm. through that through the foundation that was laid and I thought about it when you say you raise up a child you know you you have that in you and you just don't realize and you know you I even look back now so often and be like didn't even realize how you know God was moving and shifting and but you look back and realize it had to be some things out of your control and you know, mm-hmm. out of some things that took place, mm-hmm. but you don't see it then. But you, you know, so it probably played some role. We just didn't realize it. More yeah, than. and I think definitely, um, like I said, this was this is definitely a God ordained union mm-hmm. because it had it been up to me, we would not, we would probably not have been united because it wasn't something that I was looking to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so even though we didn't, we weren't acknowledging faith. It was, it was probably definitely, it was there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so what was the hardest part about being married versus being single? Um, I mean, the basics, first of all, having people in your space when you weren't used to having people in your space, mm-hmm. um, making decisions with people, even about what to eat when you just used to, <laughs> like, you, that's not something that you normally would run by people. Mm-hmm. Um, and finding out, like, what it, the other person's quirks are, um, mm-hmm. figuring out, like, what works in the house. Um, what doesn't work in the house? So just, mm-hmm. um, just merging space, right? I think, right. yeah. I think just being mindful of someone else besides yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're single, you kind of go and go as you please, do what you want to do, and you know, we we kind of live on that. I'm my person. I go. I don't answer to nobody. And then all <laughs> of a sudden, you know, everything you do impacts someone else now. Um, so I think it is that, you know, the space thing, but also just now, you know, having to make not decisions for two people, but just knowing that whatever decisions you make is mm-hmm. not just impacting you, it impacts someone else. Right, mm-hmm. right, that's good. And if you, you know, in a relationship to, you know, you, you want to value that. You want to value, you know, it's always, and it's not always a compromise, but it's, you know, you still, the decisions I make is not just want to be only for me, mm-hmm. you know, to make sure that it's, it's beneficial for, for the both. Mm-hmm. And you guys kind of talked about like your faith. So how do you keep God at the center after all the years that y'all been together? Just God be my help. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so, 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 so the early years, you don't call on Jesus much. The early years when the honeymoon phase all that, but after them years get long, you be like, Lord Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you do gotta go home after this. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, 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 there's, there's that grace that I'm hoping I'm gonna get. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I mean, once you come into the knowledge um, of who God is and that everything is orchestrated by Him, then you, it's kind of, um, it's kind of auto- automatic. 
Um, so when you're with someone who's equally yoked, that makes it mm-hmm. uh, even that more um, simple to do. Right. Um, and just knowing um, what God requires, um, what he expects of us, um, and just kind of, you know, walking, steady walking in that path. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, describe each of your roles in the relationship. How did it come to, um, how did you come to have roles? Hmm. (laughs) (laughs) So I don't know that we have defined roles. Um, (laughs) so yeah, we've been married for 31 years and people are always, what my family, um, (laughs) even this week, what they talked to me about a lot is cooking because I don't cook. Um, and I don't. (laughs) And so there's and there's this who no is it, who is it that has that song I don't cook I don't clean but let me tell you how I got this ring. Yeah. So it was not it, there's not any really defined roles like we this is a partnership and we do everything like we yeah. do everything in the house together. Um, uh, even you know when the children were small, the children were were our responsibility. Like if I had to get up and go to work for eight hours. We're doing the same thing, yeah, so right. yeah. there's nothing that's more required of me that's not required of you. Because unless I'm gonna stay home with these kids, right? Yeah. <laughs> unless I'm staying home with these kids, <laughs> <laughs> then the the, the the house is our responsibility. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's how we, yeah. And and again, it was really never a conversation. We just kind of we just did. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. somebody felt like, or somebody, you know, there may have been. I'm not fixing anything tonight. I'm tired. You know. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't the, you know, that didn't mean that won't somebody saying, you know, that was just somebody saying I'm tired, you know. Yeah. But it again, we just kind of shared those roles. Okay. Yeah, true. Um, so what are some things that you do to kind of keep your relationship fresh? Um, we keep dating. Mm, okay. So date nights, um, date weekends, um, vacations, um. Yeah, so, you know, when we had kids, our schedules were always booked. It was, you know, kids always had something going on, playing sports, something mm-hmm. at school. Um, then as they, you know, slowly matriculated out of the house, you know, then when they're gone, all of a sudden it's like, oh, there's no buffer here no more. We got to realize, <laughs> you know, we're going to be able to get along. Could we even, you know, do we like each other? Because now it's just us. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it's movies. It's you know um, we don't we don't do church on fifth Sundays so a lot of times that's our weekend so okay. you know and and we don't have to be you know it doesn't have to be extravagant we may go to Durham we can may go to Cary we may go get a pizza it's it's you know the quality time is is as much as the the event we're doing too right. you know so but just continuing to do those things and um, also seeking things that seeking out things that we don't do or we haven't done like a sip and paint or mm-hmm. yeah. there's this new thing in Carrie that we went to where you throw paint against the wall <laughs> so just finding just finding yeah. things that neither one of us know anything about but again it's, it could be a date night and mm-hmm. just you know going and, and doing doing those things and staying yeah. connected because like you said once the kids are gone you look at this person and you you know, you do have to ask the question, do we even really like each other? Right. <laughs> or were we right. here just raising kids? Mm-hmm. And so if if all you are doing is pouring all your, your energy into the children, when the children leave, then you have each other to um to continue with. So yeah. <clears throat> um so how do you resolve conflict and what helps you to love the other person even when you're mad at them? Y'all don't talk all this one time. <laughs> um, so, you know, the cliche that communication is key, is that that is the thing. Um, you have to know how a person communicates. Um, and you have to know what is effective with that person. So um, depending on what the conflict is, um, <laughs> if it's something that we have talked about several times... <laughs> Keep doing the same thing. At some point, at some point, you have to you have to know what your what your your triggers are, and only you, you're responsible for your own triggers. That's People true. are not responsible for your triggers. Right. Mm-hmm. So knowing what that is, and knowing that if you can't change that person, you can only change you mm-hmm. and how you react to those things. But then you can tell them, okay, um, 
here we are again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want to bring it to your attention. Um, you know, whatever the thing is. Um, but again, just communicate. You have to let people know. It's not their responsibility to know what's irking you and why it's irking you. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I, I think ultimately, you know, knowing that someone not, is not intentionally <laughs> making you upset. Right. And, you know, we're not going around intentionally, you know, I'm not hiding things. You know, if I knew something irritates her, I'm not going to just say, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get her back. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not that. So. Part of knowing that, you know, even when those things happen and we get on each other's nerves, it, it's, it's never personal. It's not intentional. You know, things happen and, you know, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go by the wayside. Right. And when you're in a marriage, like <clears throat> when you, you know, you took those vows and said till death do us part, you have to be serious about that. Right. Like you have to know that divorce is not on the table. Mm -hmm. It's not right. an option. Like not a I'm, I'm probably getting ready to go to my room and I don't want to see you for a few hours. <laughs> Or I might leave this house, but just know I'm coming back. <laughs> yeah. um, and so you do, again, what, you know, what, take care of your own mental health. Mm, right. Again, the, the other person is not responsible um, for um, maybe how, I wouldn't, I won't, maybe not how you feel. They're your feelings. They're valid. But whether they, um, you know, acknowledge or not, like it's on you to take care of you and then be able to, to then tell that person. Right. What they did, right? Um, right. And how we're going to move forward. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I need some space right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and after thirty one, you you don't have to say it anymore. You kind of know when people need that space. Mm -hmm. Like okay, that's somebody needs some space. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna sit over here. <laughs> Was it that easy though? Like in the beginning, like if she needed space, no. did you start to feel like, well, what's wrong with her? Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. For the long time, it was like, yeah, I want to. Yeah, I'm, so then when you realize it's making it worse. <laughs> no, cause really, I don't want to talk to you right now. And I definitely want to hear what's wrong, what's going on, what, why, what, why, you know. So none of that. So just, you know, let's, let's it'll, it'll, it'll relax. <laughs> I'll find out what I did later on. And, you know, and it may not even be something they did. Like, yeah, again, yeah, with, with yeah. The if I had just got through screaming at a kid, <laughs> don't come try to have a conversation. <laughs> yeah, 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 this yeah. is not a good time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it has nothing to do with you. <laughs> yeah, nothing. But yeah. don't come talk to me as right. I just got through yeah. screaming at this kid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Come home and be like, you know, the worst thing happened. I'm so sick of work. Okay. You know, <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm not the one, but that's, that you know, now it's okay. What? How can I be supportive of mm -hmm. this conversation? The rest of the, you know, mm -hmm. to not first of all dismiss how she feels about work, right. and and just overlook that, but at the same time, concerned enough. Mm -hmm. The boy, she, did you just hear me say I had a horrible day at work? <laughs> I, I did, you know. So, it, but you learn that balance, you mm -hmm. know. You learn that, and and you learn too, you know, what helps those situations mm -hmm. so you know how to how to make that bad day not be as bad you know right. yeah and right. and be willing to to offer a grace like you said we from our 20s to our 50s if you can imagine there's been some involvement mm -hmm. oh, yeah. mm -hmm. so <laughs> people are not gonna you're, we're not the same people that we were when we got married right mm -hmm. um and so in order to stay in it for 31 years you have to want to grow with this person yeah. like we kind of raised each other we mm -hmm. have lived with each other longer than we've lived with our parents mm -hmm. right. so that is you know that is something that you have to take into consideration this person is may not even know who they were at 25 right. and yeah. just are now coming into it mm -hmm. um and again till death do us part means just that right. yep. <laughs> and you know and how many things change in a relationship you know when you when you 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 we were first married when we had well we had one child, but then you bring another child in. Okay, that adds another dynamic to the relationship. Mm -hmm. And you have a third child, that adds another dynamic. Right. Then you go get a house, that adds another dynamic. <laughs> then you got a so there's so much things that just add to the, you know it's always something that is just being added to the relationship. Um, but if you can allow kind of the relationship to kind of dictate how you manage all those other things and don't allow those things to manage the relationship mm, that's good. that i mean that that's just helpful and mm -hmm. again i think part of knowing that you know the teamwork and the togetherness and you know no matter how rough it gets no matter what we have to go through when you know that this person is not going nowhere right it, it's just a big help right you know right. it gives you you know you you can kind of 
make some decisions and it may not be the best decision. But if you if you had good intentions, you know that person not just going, you know, they may be upset at some decision, but they're not going to just bail. You know, right. they're not going to be like, I'm out. Right. So. So 31 years is a long time. Um, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you can say that again. Right. <laughs> so what's the best part about being married and what have you learned from one another through the years? So for me, um, the best part about being married is having that built-in best friend. Mm -hmm. Like there is not anything that is going to happen to me or for me that he's not the first person that I want to talk to about it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's, I mean, that's that's the biggest to just have your, this is my person. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, don't ask, don't ask me to go nowhere <laughs> if Wayne ain't coming. <laughs> like, and that's just like you. You get yeah. to that. You just get to that point where this is the person who I want to. I want to spend my, most of my time with him. That sometimes I need some time away, but mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to spend most mm -hmm. of my my time with him. Yeah. I think that the friendship that wanting to share and the support of you know, kind of you know, when you want to do things, the support you get. Of just encouragement, even when you feel like you, I can't do this. You know, still having that mm -hmm. support group. Yeah, yeah. That's good. and you know, and, and like you said, sometimes you know when you want those quiet times, or when you may be upset, you know, there may be a couple of days communication is not at, at at the top level, but then something happens, and it's like, oh, let me. Oh, they probably don't want to talk to me right now. <laughs> I mean, but, but that, that reaction never leaves. Right. Because whether it's good or bad, you that's the first thing you want to do is call mm -hmm. that person and say, uh, oh. Because that's your, you know, that's your therapist. It's, you know, you bounce things off. You need to, you know, you go to them for everything. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. it, you know, sooner or later, you know, and there's been times where, you know, we've had conversations with situations that may even be when, you know, communication wasn't at the, at the, at the moment. She may not want to talk to me, but I could at least say, hey, I have to do this, this, and that. What do you think? And I would, get a, I would at least get that. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, that never left. Mm -hmm. You know, that part never left. Right. <clears throat> and you also mentioned, um, like, you're not the same as you was you were 25. So how did you learn to adapt to one another throughout the marriage? as time went on i think a lot of it is for me it was wanting the best for this relationship and for the family mm -hmm. you know there's a lot of things that i did you know that i wanted my kids to see positiveness i want them to see a good role i wanted you know there were things that i quit doing that i was like oh you know that was just what i wanted to do because I didn't want my children to be around that. Right. So I think part of it was just for the betterment of that relationship and the betterment of of the family and just overall that, just um, making those different decisions and growing like that. Yes. <laughs> 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 you look at me like, you did that? <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> so what would you say your um, favorite memory is since being married? Oh man, too many. Um. <laughs> I would say I don't know that it's a, a, a favorite memory, but it's definitely a pivotal one. Again, that goes back to the wedding vows that says, "For better, for worse, mm -hmm. and richer for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health." And um, ten years ago, I was diagnosed with breast cancer, and so as you might imagine, that is like. That's traumatizing. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of things, especially as women, that we go through. I'm not going to have my hair. Um, my body's going to change. And so mm -hmm. there's all these, these these internal things. And so um, I credit Wayne with actually with nursing me back to health, with loving me back to health. Mm -hmm. um, again, he was that he was that constant. He was that solid person. He was he was the one who was there to combat the negative thoughts that mm -hmm. I was having. Like there was never that he never let me soak in these negative thoughts. Mm -hmm. Like, and I, I just remember one day I, me saying that um, something about me having cancer. He was like, um, you had surgery and they took the cancer out. Like, you don't have cancer. <laughs> 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 and 
<laughs> it was like it was so like so basic. Or um, and, and and so I was diagnosed with like the most aggressive kind, like the um triple like triple negative. It was like they don't have like a cure for triple negative cancer. Like they don't have no cure for no cancer. Like so, like stop this. Like just stop. Right. So it was like for every um you know just going through, and it was, and it still it was, I'm still not over that mm-hmm. um but just go when i was in it when i was in it he was in it right. um and he was there to again support me um to encourage me mm-hmm. um to again let me know that there was i mean what did bruno say they might say hi and i might say hey yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you shouldn't worry yeah. like there was never <laughs> any there was never any worry like he thought i was cute with no hair he thought i was cute when oh. it was growing back so <laughs> And and he would tell me those things. So that's that was that's I think good. that has been the 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 pivotal point. Right. Um and we were twenty years in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So and he, you know, even you know, someone allowing you to do that too means a lot. Just being vulnerable. You know, that's not easy to you know, we all have our pride, we all have, you know, no one wants to have someone to take care of us. You know, mm-hmm. it's difficult. Um and so even, you know, her and allowing me to be in that moment too, um, you know, just says a lot about who she was, right. you know, and not pushing me away and saying no, don't, you know, I'm a little, I want I somebody mean, I else. Tried, I tried that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like leave me alone. <laughs> okay, so what advice would you give um, to people about finding a mate? Um, I would say no. Just know what your, um, what your we talked about lists, right? So just know what, um, just you can have a list, but know that there are some things that may not be checked off the list and some right. things that you're not even looking for. And knowing what your deal breakers are. Like, what is yeah. your what is your deal breaker? Mm-hmm. Like, somebody that don't work, that's a deal breaker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, just knowing what those what those deal breakers are. Somebody who's not supportive, somebody who's, who's selfish. Like, what are your deal breakers? Yes. And when you see it and you know that it's a red flag, just know that you're, you're not going to change them. Mm-hmm. Like, that's probably who they're going to be. So either this is now not a deal breaker um, and you can live with this or... This, this is not the person for you. Right. Right. Um, so just knowing, uh, valuing yourself, knowing, you know, what you bring and what you're looking for um, and who you think would best compliment, compliment that. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. I'd say find someone you enjoy being around. I mean, because eventually you're going to, I mean, you're going to be with them. Um, <laughs> right. I mean, you know, that's part of what marriage is. But, you know, get somebody that you like being around. And, you know, that you enjoy being around all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, not just, you know, when it's convenient, not when it's just out, when, you know, because you can have your list. And, you know, we all change. I'm nowhere, anywhere physically like I was 20, 31 years ago. I mean, we all change. Yes. Um, we, we we create habits and you know things like that but someone that you you know you're willing to i don't want to say you know you don't you don't lower your standards or put up with stuff but somebody to say you know i put up with a few little quirks because i really i really enjoy this person that's good that's good all right so our next topic is family do you get along with the in-laws Yes, I, <laughs> I, I love my in law. <laughs> so yeah, my I have the greatest uh, in law. Sometimes they too good. Um, they better than me sometimes. They are, uh, um, but yeah, in laws, great. Um, on you know my side of the family, I always was tried to be mindful of uh, making sure that you know not only her but my family was comfortable Mm -hmm. being around um and there was part of my family that you know kind of distanced itself and decided that they didn't want to have no parts of us and i was like that's fine we're good i got plenty of the family over here plenty of support um but yeah yeah my in-laws have been super supportive with everything yeah and so i i think i had it easier than wayne um again my both my grandmas had 12 children so if you can i have like a hundred first cousins yes. <laughs> yeah. so my family is huge mm-hmm. um wayne had 
one sister. I think oh. he got five cousins. Oh wow! Oh, wow. <laughs> this would be a fa- <laughs> this, this would be a yeah. family. Re- <laughs> <laughs> this would be a family reunion in my family right here. We, this is a family reunion with my family right here. And I'm talking about five cousins from both sides. Like yeah. his, his family was really small. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah. Um, so his mom lived here. His mom was his mom was awesome. She was instrumental in in uh helping us raise those children mm-hmm. um when we needed those marriage maintenance weekends mm-hmm. so there's no, nobody like miss yeah. betty love miss betty <laughs> yeah. um uh and his dad too like we yeah. just just visiting with him like there was so there was no there's no hat feeling mccoy mm-hmm. um kind of feeling going on. y'all may be too young for that reference but. Yeah. <laughs> i'm trying to figure out what, what you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> i'm trying to figure out like, I need an explanation of that. 31 years, 31 years. <laughs> um, but yeah, but um, for, for Wayne, again, there was there's so many of so many of us. Yeah, yeah. we're 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 large. Um, but we have, you know, I have people who say this is my cousin um, Wayne and this is his wife. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, no, that's not that's not how that goes. <laughs> It, it took me a couple of years with a scorecard trying to figure out like a tournament brackets. Okay, <laughs> I mean it was like sheets and paper. Who the, who's that? Who's that? Yeah, it was, yeah. Yes. All right. So, any advice on how couples should merge families? Um. Again, knowing knowing what the deal breakers are, and we are we are a blended family. Like I said, I I had um a daughter when when we got married. Um. So just knowing what those and you talk about this up front. Who's gonna Who's uh, gonna be disciplining the children? Like, if you don't trust the person that you're with to discipline your child, then maybe this is not the person mm-hmm. that you should be with. So mm-hmm. again, just putting those boundaries in place, those deal, those um, whatever your deal breakers are, um, and knowing, um, you know, what's important. Like again, the relationship. It's uh, it's always us. It's mm-hmm. us versus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's us versus whatever, mm-hmm. um, and so just knowing that you know, kids and all, yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah, we won't. Yeah, we, we it was never going to be separation of kids and us. It was going to be you know we were we were us. Yeah. So that's good. Okay, so how did you communicate or discuss raising mixed kids? Um, I didn't discuss raising mixed kids. Yeah, we was raising black kids. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, so, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, at, if if we're out, Wayne looks like the person who doesn't belong to the to the family. Yeah. So there's no need to be talking about mixed and biracial. Like y'all black. <laughs> Um, and when you leave this house, people outside yep. they they see you as black. Yep. The police are not calling in a little biracial boy. Running, they're not doing that. Right. You're right. black. Yeah. Um, and that is not to negate like his side of the family. Again, like I said, his mom was um, very instrumental in helping us raise them. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's cute when you see a little white lady out with two little boys when they little at the Dollar Tree, but when they twelve and they thirteen and they taller than her. They look like and they're seen kidnapped. as a threat <laughs> to her. Yeah. Like, there's no need to put our children in that predicament that somebody's going to say something to you, mm-hmm. and you don't understand why people are talking to you like this, and you're with your grandma. Right. Yeah. Um, and they have, um, you know, they have experiences like that with their dad. Like, being out with their dad, this is their daddy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And somebody will come up and thank him for taking time with kids, with at-risk <laughs> youth. Yeah. Like, bro, these are my kids. Yeah. yeah. yeah so we- no, those people don't come and say nice of you to just hang out with these biracial mixed kids no mm-hmm. that's not what they see that's mm-hmm. not what they think so yeah. we never we don't have no yeah. biracial butterflies we don't we didn't yeah. raise them like we talked about i mean reality what's real yeah. i mean when, <laughs> yeah this is what people are going to portray you when you leave this house mm-hmm. and you need to know that mm-hmm. you know you need to know what society says how society is going to act and you know to just you know don't be shocked no and and because you can deal with it, you know you know how to handle it. Then, if you know what's real, right? right. Yeah, yeah. So when um our son Jordan says people walk up to him and just start speaking Spanish to him, <laughs> like you, you know why? Like they don't. Yeah. Not because you mixed, because yeah. they think you something other than mixed with like. Yeah. Again, not to negate the white part, but the white is so low. Like <laughs> nobody nobody was taking you for no white kids out here. <laughs> Okay, so what are your parenting styles? 
And again, that's that's an involvement, I think, for me. <laughs> um, yeah. Especially now. So again, parenting styles from the beginning was it's, it's real. This this is what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, but you I think I think can. we have yeah. Just imagine. 22 23 being paying like we're okay. still trying to figure out who we are mm-hmm. and now we're responsible for these other little humans mm-hmm. um but i mean parenting style is just being direct um there was you know correction until we figured out better when you know better you do better so mm-hmm. now our children look at how we raise these grandkids like why nobody getting the whippings around here <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah they, yeah, they don't happened? like that what happened to the whippings in this house yeah. they don't like um, that <laughs> They don't like. They don't like that. Yeah, so we were practicing with y'all. We're we, we gonna do so much better with this second generation. We know yeah. all the stuff we shouldn't do. And I mean, even saying that, like you have, and you have to be adult enough to go back and apologize to your children, yeah. like yeah. for how you raise them. If if they have issues, like you can't take issue with what they say um, about how they were raised, because that is their experience. That was their mm-hmm. perspective. Mm-hmm. So you can, you know, again, all I can say is I was. 26 right. <laughs> and it was um, for y'all <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. y'all might have got jacked up <laughs> <laughs> but that doesn't like that's that's not like absolving me of how that makes them feel um so you know right now again parenting style is is communication like talking to these little people right. um and and allowing them which we were not allowed to do and which we didn't really allow it, the children some more than we were allowed to express their feelings. Yeah. Like they have big emotions, they're able to have those big emotions. Mm-hmm. Right. But just know you're gonna bring that down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Gonna bring that down. Um and, and we'll have a conversation about it. So right. but we was it was never um any contrast between how we parented. Oh, that's good. All right, so how did having children change your marriage? And he kind of alluded to this before. Um, every child is born into a different family. So even when they're born in, in the same house, they're born into a different family. So like he said, the first child, um, you know, that that changes everything. Like, first of all, we can't just run out of the house. Let's grab a diaper bag. Make yes. sure the car seat is in there. Make sure they have a change of clothes so you don't just you don't just run out. Um, and you depending on who your friends are, if they don't have children, then you um, sometimes change, have to change your social, how your social um, activity, your social calendar may change a little bit. But um, you have, children are prioritized. Again, they don't, it's still us. It's still us. Um, But again, now we are responsible for these little people, these little humans. Mm -hmm. Um, And it, it made it, um, necessary to to then start scheduling us time yeah um because you get Mm -hmm. so involved in like little people drain all of your energy like they take everything they take your money they take (laughs) they take take everything (laughs) but it's so much easier when you're young because these grandchildren boy there's like 20 30 minutes i'm like almost done (laughs) where's your mom and daddy (laughs) but i mean we we kept rolling i mean we had one of our Two, two, two of the oldest ones, Jordan. One, he grew up. He spent a many a weekends in a pack and play um, at the softball field because mm-hmm. I played softball. We both played softball, and I was on the team. We played tournaments a couple times a month, and so that's what we did. We packed up kids. We 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 went as a family. Mm-hmm. So you know, he's out there in his pack and play playing, and I'm playing. I mean, so we did. We spent all day, you know, all weekend at the ball field. And, but we did all of that together, so it was really not, uh, you know, we, it didn't separate. We didn't kind of, we couldn't do it all together. We just, things we just didn't do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. All right, I know you just spoke on grandkids. Um, how do you maintain a marriage once the kids are all grown up? That goes back to before, they, before they're grown, before they leave. Um, again, just, just solidifying this union um, and understanding that, um, maybe by the time they're 18 they, these children are not going to be here and so this is looking at the long picture mm-hmm. right because at 22 and 23 I don't even know if I knew I would still be married for 18 years <laughs> so I mean you just, you're just going into it but, but looking back 
um, I now know that you have to make this relationship. This is the priority. Mm-hmm. Um, and so yeah. and when the children leave, it's, nothing changes. They're just not here. We just yeah. we have more time to look at each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think, you know, it, it gets a little different when they're older because, you know, when kids are young, you kind of both have, you know, a lot of grace and mercy. And, it's, you know, they're, cheer, they're kids. You know, now when the older kids do something, you know, we have a conversation sometimes, you know, and we may be on two two different opinions. One of them may be like, no, I'm no, I'm, I'm we don't need to help them. Or or we may feel a certain way about <laughs> a situation. And the other one may feel the other. And we may go back and forth. You know, there's times when one of the kids would do something and I'd be like, Oh, I know she gonna have a fit. <laughs> she, and but it'd be totally opposite. It would be like, Oh man, that's just terrible. And and it's to and I'm like, Oh well. But we don't it's not like Last time you did this, or with the other one you did this, we just kind of roll with it, mm-hmm. and and all the kids are different, you know. We don't treat them different, but we 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 still parent them different, right. you know, right. because they're all different. Um, but I think that's a lot of and you know keeping this relationship, you know, and not allowing what they're doing to to interfere with us. Right. Yes. All right. So I know I have a son that's in the military. Um, also, I have another son that's a sophomore. So I know I'm going to have to prepare for this eventually, (laughs) but um, how do you prepare for kids eventually leaving the house? Oh, they'll come back. (laughs) 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 They they ain't there, so we want it. (laughs) Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah, It's it's, it's, it is bittersweet um, because you do, you worry about them. Um, that never ends. That never ends. Mm-hmm. Um, but you just have to know that you know you prepared them, and you know that they're even if they're not ready. Because we all got to that age where we thought we were grown and we could just go do, and you're like, yo, they ain't not gonna make it. <laughs> <laughs> but you hope for the best, and you know we did. We told all our kids, you know we. The goal is when you leave, <laughs> don't come back. That's that's the goal. <laughs> but we also taught all of them too. You know, before you make bad decisions, before you put yourself in a situation where you shouldn't be in, you always know that you always can come back here. Mm-hmm. You know, ultimately we here no matter what. Mm-hmm. You know, even the one when they start having kids. You know, don't put your children. You know, before you before it's getting that bad, call somebody. You know, right. we. You know, and I think. Us having that understanding helps a lot, but um, but it is you know, I didn't think when we took our oldest one off to college it was gonna be, oh, I was ready like go to school, <laughs> but it was something when we walked off that campus that day to leave her there I was like, oh, this is like safe. <laughs> I mean, it was like, <laughs> but you know, it went away pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> when the two wishes started coming in, you're like, oh man. <laughs> but it's it starts um, day one, it, preparing yourself and preparing them. Like you want to instill in them what's important, the foundations. Like if it's you know your religion, if that's you know we always going to look to God. Like you instill those things early in them, and um, <clears throat> you would want to to know that when it's time for them to go, both you and them are going to be prepared. Mm. Like we should be preparing our children to one day live without us. Like if we have not prepared them to live without us, then we failed them. Um, and so what it, that, you know, whatever, if it's work ethic, um, yeah. if it's learning how to change a tire, <laughs> whatever these things are that prepare them for adulthood. So getting them prepared. And then again, us staying prepared and and us being prepared is again knowing that one day is just going to be the two of us in here and so what does that look like what do we want it to look like and we don't need to wait until they leave to start trying to build that Mm -hmm. so we're going to go to the Durham Bulls game we're going to find a babysitter for these kids they don't have to go everywhere we go um and and sometimes that's hard um to to not want your children to be where you are like, you know, off on a cruise and all you think about is maybe your kids should be here. It's okay. Go. Like, <laughs> it's okay to be places where your children are not so that you're preparing them to be away from you. And you're also preparing your the two of you to be together um, mm-hmm. yeah, more I, often. Yeah. <clears throat> our youngest child, 
I guess about a year or so ago, I came home one day and said, um, I'm moving to Arizona. Like, Arizona? <laughs> the first thing I'm thinking, you don't know nobody in Arizona. Yeah, the only thing I know about Arizona, they were the last one to pass Dr. Martin Luther King birthday. You know, not going to be out there. <laughs> But he was like, I'm going out there, Solomon, my friend, is out there. And I'm like, first we just thought, it'll pass. Then he's like packing one day, and he's like, all right, I'm leaving Sunday. And it was it was hard. I mean, he was in his 20s, <laughs> but it was difficult, you know. So it was like, all right, give me your location so I can track you all the <laughs> So, I mean, you still have that, you know, you still parent them. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, I'm following you. Okay, you can't drive that far. Sit, come over here. You're going to stop here in this hotel. You're going to drive. Mm-hmm. So even, right. you know, falling back in and doing that parent role sometimes, even when they're grown, mm-hmm. you know. And that probably was more comfort for me than it was him because he probably would have tried to drive the whole way. <laughs> <laughs> so how would you say um, being grandparents has been a blessing to your marriage? How's that been? Oh, grandchildren are wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Cause you don't, yeah. I know. <laughs> I remember, yeah. The two girls. One of them was at the house one day, and I think they wanted to go outside. And her mama was like, "Put that coat on." She said, "I don't want to." Put that coat on. I said, "Do what you want to do." I mean, <laughs> so you get to, you get to kind of make all those decisions, and uh, you know, <laughs> and then when you when you know you can give them ice cream and candy and cake and, and give them back to their parents. <laughs> <laughs> Also, though, you get to see everything new again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything through a child's eyes is new again. So we might have forgot how much we like the Little Mermaid. Mm -hmm. Um, But then having them at the house and and going through and watching these, you know, these old shows that bring back nostalgia Mm -hmm. um, just kind of reminds us where we were. In the 90s. Mm-hmm. And then you re- you remember like how old the Little Mermaid is. <laughs> <laughs> um, so again, just seeing, being able to see things new, learning how to ride a bike, getting me outside on a bike, yeah. um, getting us moving more. Mm-hmm. Those things have been blessings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, ex- and, and getting them to experience things. Because there's so many more things out here now than when our kids were growing up. Right. You know, so even, at, you know, exposing them to different you know things that weren't available when even when our kids are grown. That that's that's exciting too. Yeah, that's great. All right, so we talked a lot about unity, um, but how do you remain who you are in a relationship individually? I think that is a tribute to your partner because I can I am me twenty four hours a day. I don't have to. I don't change. I'm I'm just me, and that's cool with her. No matter where we go, I, you know, is yeah. I think that's a tribute to, you know, to who to who I'm with. Right. Is I'm just allowed to be me. Now there's times, you know, she'll be like, "Hey, we going here? You need to dress up a little bit." Oh, that's fine. <laughs> so, but but there's also times, you know, so things like that is 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 minor, but. Mm-hmm. You know, never has my, you know, she's never told me, don't act this way, don't act that. I mean, I'm just me, you know, everywhere we go. So I think, again, the big tribute is that, too, mm. is being, the, being, I can be authentic. Mm. All right. Um, and I think it, it is important to to want to remain yourself, like knowing I like doing most things with him, but some things I want to do by myself. Like sometimes I want to go to the outlets by myself mm-hmm. for a, a few reasons. <laughs> sometimes I um, want to go by and, myself. <laughs> um, and, and having friend groups outside of, like I have maybe three different friend groups that sometimes we go, we just go to dinner together because mm-hmm. these are, you know, my friends who we may talk about things that he might not want to know about. Right. Um, and so just, just having these things that um, are important to you mm-hmm. and who that keep you grounded. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, taking care of your own mental health and knowing, you know, what those triggers are for you. Um, <clears throat> and, like and and remembering those things, remembering who you are, remember what you'd like to do before the children came. Right. Remember that you like to read. <laughs> remember, 
remember that you like taking drives with mm-hmm. the sunroof open and do those things. Yes. And these are mm-hmm. like small things. Mm-hmm. And so, um, and it helps you to be a better you. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's, you know, you can't c- continue to pour out to other people when you're pouring from an empty cup. Mm-hmm. So always make sure that you're doing things that uplift you and, and refill you. Right. Mm-hmm. Nice. Right. Well, let's start talking about some of your other passions. Um, you guys have a podcast. So how mm-hmm. did your podcast come about? And tell us the name so they can find you. Yes. So is so the name of the podcast is At the Helm. So it is a play on our last name, Wilhelm. And so At the Helm is a nautical term. So, you know, ships, boats, they have at the helm is where they navigate and they drive this ship. Mm-hmm. So the premise is, you know, you are you you drive your own life. You navigate your life and you're in control of your life. And you have the ability to go when you want to go, not go when you want to go. You have control. Right. But at the same time there's going to be things, you know, the same way you know, on a, on a ship, you may have some rough seas, you may find some storms, to, but you can still navigate through those things mm-hmm. because those, you know, and it doesn't matter how large ships are, it doesn't matter how small they are, they have what they need to be able to navigate and to move. Mm-hmm. And so that was kind of the premise of being at the helm. You are at the helm of your life and, you know, you can continue to ever evolve and grow. Um, now, how it got started was... <laughs> um, was, it, was it during the pandemic? Was during yeah, the pandemic, it was during the pandemic. Okay. Okay. when you we were not seeing a lot of people, um, and everybody had a podcast. And I just one day said, "I want to just." I was narcissistic enough to think people might want to hear what I had to say, <laughs> so yeah. I just said it. Um, and this is again goes back to you know how your person supports you. I just said I want to do a podcast. The next thing I know, microphone starts showing up. Oh, no. <laughs> like I have no idea how to do a podcast, but yeah, these microphones are here. Yeah. So, I guess yeah. we going to sit around and then the first one we did were, was with um our children, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um so, yeah, that's mm-hmm. that was how it came about. It kind of died down for a little bit. Um and then we revived it a couple years ago. Yeah. So, yeah, I went on trying to figure out how do you do this, all, all of this. The table looked just like this. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere. Yeah. And yeah. then it was like, you know what? I think I want to be on video. I think I want to be able to see it. I was like, you want to do it like live? I think so. So <laughs> then we transitioned. So, you know, now it's live. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, um, but, yeah, just and it's something we enjoy doing as well. Nice. 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 But yeah, at the helm, we have a Facebook page, we have a YouTube page. We, you know, there's, 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 we need to be, need to pour so much more into that. But we have a lot going on. But mm-hmm. we do what we do. We do what we can. And, you know, preferably the right person's going to see it one day, the right person's going to hear it one day. Yes. And, and that's, you know, whenever that is, is when it is. Right. Yes. You know, we, we, we enjoy doing it. And, you know, that's enough. Right. And, it has turned into now, you know, we're trying to provide information. Right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we, we wanted to make sure it was entertaining, um, but also, you know, educational. Yes. Right. That was great. Okay. So you're also in ministry. Um, how long have you been in ministry? And tell us a little bit about your ministry. So let me let me just talk about this for a minute <laughs> because if y'all remember like i said we won't we won't go into church right we didn't get married in no church she right man, no so i didn't marry a preacher <laughs> i married that fun dude with the curly kid and the rat tail <laughs> um but this is kind of again wayne's nature his nature is to um just kind of lead um and so when we when we found a church we we finally you know found a church and he you know, said that he felt the calling. I was like, okay, let's, we're going we gonna to think about that. <laughs> Not even pray about it. We're going to think about that for a minute. You feel a calling to do what? <laughs> so he said, he, you know, he felt the calling to the, to the preaching ministry. Mm. Um, and so again, it took some, I was not, I really was not 
all in to church when we was going to church. Like when I said I was done with church, I really was done with church. Right. Um, and so having to adjust, and again, it goes back to when you're in a marriage, supporting what that is. Mm -hmm. And this is one of these evolving things. Like when you're married, like again, I didn't marry a preacher, <laughs> but mm -hmm. now you're wanting, I have to now adjust. Right. Mm -hmm. Again, we said till death do us part. And so, this again, this is one of these things where you know that this is a God-ordained union. Mm -hmm. um, because God already knew. I won't try to marry no preacher. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you're calling him to this, then you're also calling me to this. Right. Um, and so, you're going to have to equip me. Give me what I need to support mm -hmm. this ministry. Because I know if he's saying that, then it's real. It's right. real. And so... Um, that was what 2001 probably mm, probably yeah 2000 maybe yeah cuz i think and again um, we got married in 93 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you're talking about all these yeah, years right, right. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah exactly. all these years where we have you know we're not really involved in ministry and so um so first he's called to be a preacher which is you know okay i can deal with that mm -hmm. But then he said he's called to pastor a church. <laughs> now, I definitely was not trying to be nobody first lady. <laughs> I'm not wearing no hat. I'm not putting on no stockings. I'm not sitting on no front, no front row of no church. All of these things that you have in your mind about what what you think like so you have all of these these are your own things you don't right. have nothing to do with him right. <laughs> these are my own things <laughs> and so again you you know you have to you speak with god and, and your in the way you talk to god like okay god <laughs> if this is what you are calling us to do again you're gonna have to equip me um, you're going to have to give me what I need. Because clearly he getting what he needs. Right. <laughs> he getting what he needs. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're dragging me along with him, because mm -hmm. I don't plan to divorce him. Like, I still love him and everything. <laughs> this, is not, this is not a deal breaker. This is not one of my deal breakers. Right, right. My deal breaker was not, okay, if you're a preacher, we can't be there. <laughs> that was not it. And so um, it has been a beautiful Thing, a wonderful thing it has again this this when you continue to evolve with the relationship mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. it's not what it started out it's not how this started out but it's where we are um and so god has done just that he has equipped me to stay with this man <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, it's been a journey it's been a journey but you know everybody's journey is different but i i know you know even being in school you know year i went to school for two three years and never every time we would come back from some break or we would come back from the semester you know everybody would be like you preaching yet you preaching yet nope not yet not yet not yet and i was okay with that because i knew you know when god said it would be time it would be time mm -hmm. and then even you know after you know the ordination and we was you know at our home church you know even you know wasn't seeking to be you know, a pastor anywhere. You know, I say, you know, one day, yeah, I, I feel that. But in, in God's time, when I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm good. I'm not rushing nothing. And and just to see how God moved and put us to where we're at, um, and just the steps and the process. It, you just know it just was God. Mm -hmm. And you know, the place we're at. You know, I've said before, if we would have, you know, took applications for church members, we couldn't have, couldn't have interviewed and got better people right i mean god knew what we needed and you know knew what they needed and we've been there 12 12 years now mm -hmm. um oh. and it's been it's been a journey it's been good um both sides so um yeah it's 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 been it's an amazing journey just to see you know god continue to do you know what god does mm. that's, that's good that's really good so we're going to talk a little bit about activism because I know y'all are strong on that. Um, so how do you um, become involved in that type of work? Or how did y'all become involved, you would say? I think the very first thing that I can remember may have been Trayvon Martin. Mm. When, when Trayvon Martin happened, there were marches kind of all over the country that people were doing, um, putting on hoodies and and doing so much and I think Raleigh had one mm -hmm. and I think I think you I don't even think I went I think you and the boys went mm -hmm. 
So that was kind of initially, that was probably the first. And then the More Monday movement, of course, it was all on the news. And you just start hearing um, those things. And we went to a couple of the More Mondays, not just kind of outside watching, seeing what was going on. And for me, it was just getting into that environment and and really hearing what was going on and hearing some of the facts and the stats and what people, you know, how people are living and finding out kind of how government works a little bit. It's just really, it, it just really continued to pique my interest and then to see just some of the policy violence and the, the way people legislate and the way they do and just, you know, how it continues to oppress people and it don't have to be that way mm-hmm. um so just i think the knowledge just getting into that um for me was just learning that and then just knowing yeah this is this is not right mm-hmm. i mean and then seeing the difference that people can make right. and then there was the election in 2016 oh yeah that was the big thing. <laughs> yeah that was the big thing that was. the election in yeah. 2016 said we ain't doing enough yeah. <laughs> we got to get out here. Like, yeah. this is serious. Um, so I think that's kind of really when we amped it up. Like, yeah. we, we have to we have to pound the streets. Like, it's not a, it's not enough to just kind of sit back and be voters right. and mm-hmm. and periodically show up to a rally. Like, yeah. we have there's work to be done and there's no better people than us to do it. Yes. We got to get out here to do it. Yes. Yeah. So what would you say the best way for um, people to get involved? It depends on what your um, what your level of comfortability is. Okay. Wayne went to jail um, a couple of weeks ago. Yes. I, ain't, I ain't with that. Yes. So I'm not protesting. I'm not going to jail. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, <Kyle. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. we um, shot. We were, <laughs> again. This is an issue, and this is what you have to. Again, you can't be in ministry and and go to church every day and you hear these things that, you know, what you've done to the least of them, you have done unto me. You can't just keep sitting under these words and not be moved by that. So he went to jail because we were down at the General Assembly Mm -hmm. because they wanted to give all this money to these private schools and not fund um, the child care centers. Mm -hmm. And so child care centers were going to, there were going to be child care centers that were going to close. And in North Carolina, there would be 100,000 children who would not have safe child care. Mm. Now, my baby, 26. (laughs) (laughs) I don't have no babies in child care. (laughs) But you have to understand that child care is the the foundation of everything. People cannot work if they don't have child care. I work in child welfare, so I know I have seen the effects of what happens when children are not in safe places. Mm-hmm. And so this was something that was important to us to go down and tell the General Assembly, you're not getting ready to give um, these private school vouchers $400, 400 million. Because mm-hmm. wow. this is a surplus. This is a surplus. <laughs> wow. And and not give these daycares any money. Yeah. Uh, and children are not going to be safe. And children may die. That mm-hmm. was important to us. So we went down there. Um, and we, you know, we're making our demands we were inside we were a little loud and they was like okay y'all don't stop this noise somebody going to jail <laughs> <laughs> i backed up <laughs> <laughs> like i'm gonna scream from back here <laughs> but wade stayed you know him and a couple of other people they stayed and so the general the general assembly police came and arrested them they actually went to jail. Like he went down to Hammond Road. Like mm-hmm. he has a mugshot. Yes. Um, and so, but everybody don't have to do that. <laughs> Again, yeah. everybody we went there together. I didn't go to jail. And I'm mad at people asking me why I didn't go to jail. Somebody got to get them out. Why you ain't go to jail? So you see, you worried about the wrong thing. Let's just, let's just say free Wayne. Let's get Wayne. Yeah. Wayne. <laughs> but there are, you know, you can can make telephone calls you know it doesn't take much to call your senators know know who your senators are call these people who are making these laws um so de- just depending on what you're comfortable doing right yeah if you're comfortable mm-hmm. coming standing in the crowd at a rally do that mm-hmm. um because sometimes when we're, when the news is there they're reporting on numbers mm-hmm. um and so just your body um is is a an, an act of activism yeah. right. um so again just what whatever you're comfortable with everybody ain't got to go to jail <laughs> <laughs> the energy of those energy of the movements is is, is amazing um 
but you know any organization that someone is interested in i would i would encourage them to you know you'll know someone in the organization you know ask them can you tag along to a meeting okay. ask them can you just sit you know and and Go slow, right. you know. So if it's a NAACP meeting, if it's a North Carolina Poor People's Campaign, if it's Democracy NC, if it's you know Down Home NC, so whatever that organization is, you know, sit in on a few of those meetings. Yes. And most of these organizations, you know, it's all volunteers. So they, you know, they want people, but they, you know, the beauty of a lot of these organizations are they they realize people have different capacities, mm-hmm. and it's never any judgment, never, never, even that day. When all of there was eight of us down at General Assembly, you know, and you know we we talked about it, and we you know we never planned to go get arrested. This, that's never the plan, but you know at some point there's a larger crime mm-hmm. of not funding these children, um, and the misinformation that people are getting that you know these these private schools need these vouchers. No, they don't. They already got three hundred million. You won't give them three hundred million more, mm-hmm. and you're giving this to people who already can afford private school. Right. So you're giving it to these people who are already going, and then you discriminate against so many people. So this is not school choice. Mm -hmm. You're you're picking your students Mm -hmm. because they discriminate. These schools don't even have to abide by ADA rules. Mm -hmm. So people have disabilities, eh, you can't go. Mm -hmm. Um, They literally have on their school admissions, one of the criteria is the right fit. So literally, you sit around a table. If you listen to the wrong music, uh, you may not be eligible to go to our school. If you read some of the wrong books, you may can't come to our school. So it's very discriminatory. Mm-hmm. And, you know, to take that and continue to build that and, you know, act like this is school choice, you know, this misinformation and not do that. But that day when we went down, you know, even that day when we were there, everybody around, you know, all of us was like, hey, up until the last minute, if anyone backs out, that's fine. This is a personal choice. Mm-hmm. And if you get to the last time they're going to ask you to leave, if you walk off that last time, no no judgment. Nobody's going to say, ah, oh, you bailed on it. Nobody. Mm-hmm. The, and that's that's the that's the beauty of part of that movement mm-hmm. is just everybody having that same camaraderie with that. Gotcha. Um, but I would say, you know, join somebody at a meet and go, listen in, sit in. Um, the same thing I tell try to tell people about you know church you know people come to our church and I tell them all the time you know you can join whenever no pressure you can be a visitor forever whatever whatever makes you comfortable to be here and just because you're not joined a member doesn't mean you can't participate in everything that we have Mm -hmm. so I don't care what we have going on come join us so we, we don't, you know, this members have, sp- sp- you know, special perks that, you know, visitors don't. Mm-hmm. We're not, we're not doing that. <laughs> I mean, you know, and some people may say, well, why should I become a member? I mean, that's a personal thing. If you want to do that, you do that. But you ought to be welcome to come here when you want to come here, right. and you ought to feel comfortable when you come. You don't ought to feel no pressure of being part of, or signing, you know, joining. And and to me, that that's showing, you know. You know, really, you want them more for their for their personal reasons than for the church's reason. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, find a place, find an organization, and just go hang out a little bit and, mm-hmm. and see if you know, see if see if they like it. Gotcha. And I will say, on that day, the day that Wayne went to jail, they did um, award daycares oh, yeah. like sixty two million dollars. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. 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 So they that they would not probably yeah. have done had, yeah. had no, yeah. not been down there saying, right. "Give these yeah. babies this money." They went, right. they went back into session that afternoon and, and passed sixty seven point five million dollars. Oh, wow, so not oh. nearly enough, but yeah. it, they so. weren't going to give them anything. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and it was great new coverage that day. I mean, it was all on the news. It was so it was. It, it, everything worked out perfect. Everything yeah. worked out perfect, and we won't die. We won't, you know, we won't three about three hours. So we won't too off a bed. But it, yeah, you know. So yeah, so activism is it's a passion of ours. I think yeah. it's um because you can't. I don't think you can be in 
ministry and leadership Mm -hmm. um, and you have people in your church who don't make a living wage Mm -hmm. and you ask people to give tithes, but you don't want to get out in the street and fight for them to have a living wage. Like Mm -hmm. that don't even, but that don't make sense. You can't. Mm -hmm. Um, People who can't go to the doctor because they don't have health care. Like these people are in the church. So if your church leaders are not out there fighting for you, um, I mean, it's it's the least we can do. Mm -hmm. Um, And again, we could sit home uh, in the comfort of our home. That's empty. (laughs) We could sit there. We could do that. We could easily do that. Um, But, you know, ministry is 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 more than a title. Like you have to genuinely care about people. Mm -hmm. Um, And this is the passion that keeps us going, because until everybody is free, none of us are free. Mm -mm. Right. Yeah. You can't love Jesus and not love justice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, this year, super important with election Mm -hmm. year. (laughs) <laughs> um, so why for people that are listening and they don't want to vote, why is it so important to, for people to vote this year and vote in general, it's but not, especially this, this year, it's not a nonprofit. Is no. <laughs> I don't want to break no rules. I didn't want to mess up no tax donations or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is, um, this is, oh my gosh. And you know, y'all, y'all are aware this is. And we, you know, every time for the last, I don't know how many elections, it's been the election of your life. This is both the most important election <laughs> mm-hmm. ever. But this one, whew, this one really is. And the next one will probably say the same thing. Um, but this is crucial with uh, with so much that they have going on um, with Project 2025, um, with all of that stuff that they are trying to do. Um, this literally potentially could be the last election if the wrong group gets in. Mm-hmm. Um you know, however side you see it. But uh, there's one group that will be another election. We know for sure. But, uh, yeah, it's just, it's it's terrible. <laughs> yeah, and there is no part of your life that is not governed um, yeah. by people who are in elected offices. Yep. So even if you don't participate, you are going to fall under the rule mm-hmm. that they make. Yep. Um mm-hmm. If you didn't vote for those people downtown Raleigh who didn't want to get those babies money, somebody's going to fall under that rule. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Those there's a lot of working parents who, um, you know, it, it is to their benefit to go out and vote. And we we think about the presidential election, and it is super important. It is really super important this this year. Um, and people, we've gotten into this place where we think we gotta like we we gotta like our politicians. We don't gotta like them. No. Um, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris were not my first, second, or third choice <laughs> in 2020. They were not, right. but they were what we had. Mm-hmm. Um, and going against what we had, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we yeah. already know, you know, that dude already been president. It's yeah. not like he knew. Like he is not. We know what he is going to do, and. Now we know that he's going to do worse. Mm-hmm. And he uh, he keeps saying, I don't need your votes. Like, I don't. He keeps telling people, I don't need your votes. Like, yeah. y'all listen to yeah. what this dude, because <laughs> he always say the quiet stuff outside, yeah, out, yeah, you know, yeah. out loud. And yeah. I know they be saying, bro, you ain't supposed to say that out loud. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. he yeah. says, I don't need your votes. Like, so we know that there is something that they're going to do. They're already putting these people in place. Um, who are supposed to certify the vote mm-hmm. like they wanted Mike Pence to not certify the vote. Mm-hmm. We have people here in North Carolina and in Georgia and all of these swing states who are the people who are responsible for certifying votes. Um, it is important to get out and to vote because it is your voice. Um, it is. I mean, it is again, we are going to if you if you enjoy clean water. Um, again, we just had Debbie. If you enjoy knowing that this dangerous weather is coming, mm-hmm. um, if you enjoy your children going to um, public schools where the teacher is responsible for teaching your children mm-hmm. religion. Yeah, because that's what they're doing. The teacher is going to be responsible <laughs> for teaching your babies religion <laughs> um, because they were going to get rid of the Department of Education. Um, if you are a woman, if you love a woman, if you want to support a woman, women are under attack right now. Mm -hmm. It is, you know, it is important to go out and vote for, you know, people who want women to have bodily autonomy. Like these things are important. And again, we don't have to love these people. We put people in place that we can hold accountable. Mm -hmm. Um, Voting is not the be all end all. Voting is maybe like number six or seven. Mm -hmm. After you vote them in, know their phone number, Mm -hmm. know when to call them. 
know when to show up and this year um in the house of representatives every seat is up for election like every one of them can go oh <laughs> if you're sick of them every one of them can go um but just being informed and knowing um because we are and right now we are a two-party system it sucks it's what we have but these are the people who are going to be making these decisions mm -hmm. that are going to affect your life if you're mm -hmm. if you're wanting to buy a house soon these are the people who control what the interest rates are. There, yep. You cannot get away from uh -uh. Um, from what the government does. Right. So yeah. why would you not want to be involved in making that decision about who's going yeah. to yeah. be in charge of making those decisions? So yeah. 2024 yeah. is a pivotal, pivotal year. Yeah. We have yeah. 88 vote, days. Vote early. Vote early. Vote early. Um, they are they're purging people off the um Voter rolls, check your voter status at the uh, Board of Elections because they are going on and just purging people off. So you may be registered today and maybe not tomorrow. Um, yeah. And for people who, you know, say they're not going to vote, they don't care, you know, doesn't, doesn't bother me, doesn't impact me. You know, unless you can make your own power, um, unless you can make your own water. Lest you have your own school system, lest you have your own transportation system in life, um, unless you have um, your own financial institution, um, all of these things that happen in everyday life, you know, if you don't have that your own and you make that on your own, uh, these decisions, these people are making decisions that impact us every day. And, um, you know, we, we, we find out that, you know, elections have consequences. And from the, from, the bottom to the top, you know, politics are all local, from school boards to to town councils to county managers to well, county um commissioners, commissioners. county commissioners. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, all of these people make those decisions, and if we want those people to make decisions that you know, and they're not always going to make the decisions that we may agree with, but as long as they make good moral decisions that don't hurt. Mm -hmm. hurt humanity or hurt um you know i may not want 29 new neighborhoods going up where i live right. but at the end of the day is that killing anybody i mean you know i mean right. you know these decisions that they're making now you know are going to are going to hurt people's lives you know so it's 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 not going to be good we need to really make sure we get out and the misinformation and the disinformation is just is is even worse and so that's one thing that we, you know, that we have tried to make sure that we, you know, keep people informed and, and just try to to make because you, you hear stuff and you see stuff and it's just misinformation goes a long way. Yes. And here in North Carolina, um, we definitely want to make sure that we're voting down ballot. Um, again, the school board, we have we have someone who's running for superintendent of North Carolina who was um, at the insurrection on January the 6th. She yeah. was there. Yeah. Um, she's running for superintendent of schools. Who the, the, these are the people who want to ban books, who yeah. don't want us to know um, about our history. Um, so definitely know who's who's on the ballot. Yeah. Um, our governor's race mm. is a whole mess. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, Lord. <I'm> <laughs> um, but again, these are the people who will be making um, decisions about where we live, where we live in North Carolina. Um, whoever the president is. They don't they're not making decisions about us being able to wear a mask, which is now against the law. Yeah. yeah. It's the law. against the law to wear a mask out in public. Yes. Right mm -hmm. now, because of the people who we have um on Jones Street in the General Assembly. Mm -hmm. Those are the people who um who we put there and those are the people who we can remove from there. So mm -hmm. every race, um, every election, not just the presidential election, every election is is pivotal. Um, and I hope people will get out and make sure that, again, you're registered. Make sure you take somebody with you. Um, it's going to take all of us. Yes. Yeah. When we fight, we win. Yep. Yeah. When we, when, we, when we fight, we win. When we vote, we win. That's good. Very good information. Very good information. Well, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Is there any... Oh, can I say one more thing? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> um, some new, the, the, the new things about um, voting this year, you do have to have uh, um, oh. your, an, an ID. Okay. So yes. you do have to make sure that you have your ID. It could be um, any government-issued ID. Um, but if you go and you don't have your ID, there's a form that you can fill out that says you forgot it. They'll let you um, 
vote with a provisional ballot. If you can go back and get your ID, definitely go back and, and do that. Mm -hmm. um, they're checking your ID to check your face. If they say anything to you about your address, that's not what they're supposed to be checking. Yes. Oh, they're doing mm. facial. Like it's they want to make sure that it is you. If your address doesn't match, that ain't their business. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, so just make sure people know that. <laughs> <laughs> take, yeah. take your ID, but they're only matching your face. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's that's why we encourage people to, to go early. Because if you go early and you run into an issue, you got time to fix it. Right. And mm -hmm. you can find out, was it even legit? Yes, because yeah. there's going to be some, unfortunately, there's going to be some people at these polls that are going to push. You know, there are, you know, fortunately there's partisan people that are going to be working here that, you know, have a different agendas. And they're going to push and they're going to ask questions. And if people are not educated or not informed, they may feel intimidated and be like, oh, they said I couldn't do this. No, no. No, and, you know, know, know what you can do and know what the rules are. And, you know, the best thing to do is not do a provisional ballot because, again, there's no guarantee. You know, so if somebody went and had an issue, even if they say, well, just do this provisional ballot and we can do it and I'll come back with the right stuff mm -hmm. and make sure because it's just it's, it's the safest and the best way right. um, to do that. And and something else I was going to say about the um not the IDs, but the, oh, they um. So the board of election people who do not have IDs, they are having some sessions to where they're giving free IDs away. Um, so at the board of elections, there's some, if you go on their website, they have all kind of information on there. Um, but um, you can vote. That's another website. Go to you can vote. Um, North Carolina Council of Churches. North Carolina Council of Churches. Democracy Now, Democracy NC, Down Home, Democracy Now, and Down Home NC. All of these places um, have websites that have a lot of good voter information on them um, that help out. So um, there's some good information out there. And all the Board of Election is always, I mean, they're, they're fairly good information. But people can get IDs and, and find out where. Um, but, yeah, vote early, vote early, because, you know, we don't never know what's going to happen on voting day neither. You know, they're gonna, there's going to be some voter suppression out there. There's going to be some, some tactics because now this year they passed that partisan poll readers can be um, at, the, um, at the polling stations. Mm. So that means those people can have conversations and they can be partisan. Right. So there's probably going to be some bullets out there. There's probably going to be some people that are going to try to intimidate some folks and do some things. If people run into that, please call. Um, there's a number of... I don't know. It's something like one something something vote, but and you need to know that I know <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's on the website. I shouldn't have said one something something. Right, vote. but there is a number. If you go to board of elections, that number's on there. But definitely report any of those situations because they're not supposed to do that. They're not supposed to be any voter intimidation. But they're going to try every tactic they can. But that's why we need, you know, it needs, you know, this this ends up needing to be, you know, a hundred million votes to. 20 million votes so there's you know you can't just call up and tell somebody find you 80 million votes mm -hmm. and call up and say i need about 12,729 votes yeah, don't it don't need to be that close right. it needs to be a <laughs> it needs to be a blowout exactly. <laughs> you yes. know and it still might even be some issues then but at least at least you know if it's not close so but definitely get out to vote and we're free for any conversations um, any questions people don't want to vote they, I'm, I'm willing to have a conversation with any one to you know to find out why I'm willing to have a reasonable conversation <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean reasonable you yeah. one of these people who think the earth is flat I'm not talking to you <laughs> yeah. I'm not talking to you because yeah. I'm not, not going to win that yeah. <laughs> or yeah or if you think Joe and Kamala have a sex traffic ring and their yeah. basement at the White House is full of kids I mean some people yeah you can't you can't talk to some people but yeah. if someone just feels like you know, um, former president did more for um, black people than than this this administration has. We need to have a conversation because you're hearing misinformation, mm -hmm. um, or you know, unemployment was lower, or things that they're they love to tout. The economy. The economy is so much better. Yeah, yeah. We we can have those <laughs> conversations because mm -hmm. there's plenty of facts out there. And Kamala Harris did not lock up um, black folks in in California. In San Francisco, I mean, she did, but, but not like this. Not like this. She was not the, like this. She saying. was the uh, <laughs> not like attorney general. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It was her job. Yeah, I mean, it was her job. If you got yeah. caught up in 
sex abuse scandals and corporate corporate um yeah. corruption. Yeah. You and you happen to be black, <laughs> yeah. then you yeah. went to jail. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't other people. Yes. Well definitely thank you for all that information and resources mm-hmm. for people to, you know, do what they need to do and go vote. Yes. Go vote. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Oh, let me plug one thing in real quick. Yeah. I don't know if anybody has Sirius XM radio. Mm-hmm. Sirius XM radio. I think right now it may even be free for a couple months or it's a dollar for a couple months. Sirius XM radio, um, channel 126, is Urban View. And from 6 o'clock in the morning to 6 o'clock at night, they have a lineup that has great information, um, historical information, factual information. will give you all that you need um, to keep you um, informed about what's happening. And then some other good channels, too, like 74 um, which is Smoker Robinson channel. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have some smoking. You got to have a little Smoker Robinson. Um, and then there's, there's LL Cool J on channel 43. So you need some hip hop. You need some hip hop. So there's a great channels, But Sirius XM, um, definitely, definitely try it out. Good, good. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Smoky. Yeah. Gotta got, have that. You got to. So we're gonna go ahead and um, wrap it up. Is there any closing words y'all wanna leave us with for this great interview? Um, I like y'all's marriage, but yes. so this is this I is have a, questions. This is a great yeah, concept. I have questions for y'all. It's now time to interview y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if we need to start on what, uh, how you gonna do this, but um, <laughs> I like this merit bunch. Thank, thank you. you. Thank I do. You. I like thank that. Um, you know, young people are um, not turned off by marriage. That people are people. Young people can see that marriage works. Marriage mm-hmm. does. It does work. It takes work, yes. mm-hmm. um, but it does work, and it can be. You can have a thirty-one year run, uh, right. not even know that it's been thirty-one years. <laughs> yeah. um, so I appreciate you all getting this information out um, because people sometimes sleep on on marriage. Mm-hmm. Um, people who you know think it's just a piece of paper. Yes. Um, I mean it is that, but it's it's more. It mm-hmm. is right. it is a um, it's a bond with someone. It is having someone your your best friend. It is having someone to grow with. Um, again, to this this evolving that we do. So I am glad that you all have this podcast and that you're sharing it um, with your your peers, um, so that people know that this is what marriage looks like. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. yes, thank you all for coming. Yes, I want to appreciate Kelly and Wayne for coming yes. to the speech yes. with thank us. Y'all. Thank y'all for having us. Yes. 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 Make sure you go vote. Let take all the information you need. Go vote. Go vote. Go vote. Yes. 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 <laughs> the countdown is on. So we want to thank um, Kelly and Wayne again. We also want you to subscribe, like our videos, comment. We see you watching, but we don't see any comments. So we need you in the like comments. That. We really yes. appreciate it. Y'all get the algorithm. Yeah, right. get, get, the the get the like button. It's free. It's free. It's free. Yeah. It's free. Yeah. It's it don't cost like. you nothing to hit the like button That's right. and tell your friends about it. That's yes. right. You do. We appreciate it. But we're gonna leave it there. And remember, the, the wedding, wedding is only the beginning. beginning. Ooh, I like that. <laughs>